integrated pest management. Integrated pest management is a holistic approach that emphasizes plant health. It takes an ecosystem approach and emphasizes working with nature. It's integrated because it uses a mixture of methods and these should be science-based to protect the plants or the sites from pests. A pest can be anything, insects, mites, pathogens, weeds, animals, etc. Anything that becomes a nuisance or causes damage to your plants. Management is a planned, systematic way to control pest populations for damage below a predetermined level. You're never going to be able to have absolute control. It's really more of a management. So it's important to know the knowledge of the biology of pests, life cycles, interactions with hosts. Hot, dry conditions can increase mite populations. There's various things to think about when you're thinking about these pests. And how does the weather and condition of the site affect the pest? If you have an outdoor nursery, are you uh, attracting beneficial organisms? And you need to establish an economic or aesthetic threshold before you manage. So preferred management techniques include encouraging naturally occurring biological controls. And this is probably more for an outdoor nursery, not so much for an indoor. Um, any biological controls you may use are going to be introduced. You want to use alternative plant species or varieties that resist pests and then use pesticides that have lower toxicities. So you want to adopt cultivation, pruning, fertilization, and other practices to reduce pest problems. Cultural controls can do so much to do this. Overwatering can cause infestations of fungus gnats. Overfertilization can increase the incidence of aphids, mites, and powdery mildew. And sometimes it's just a matter of changing the habitat to make it incompatible with pest development. In other words, maybe you're sp spreading things out a little bit more so uh, there's no contact between plants. And then you have good airflow to prevent disease issues. So first thing is really identifying the plant. But if it's your nursery, you should already know what plants you have. Pest identification, field monitoring and population assessment are important. Control action guidelines, depending, determining when you need to control. Prevent pest problems before they happen. And then integrating biological, chemical, cultural, and mechanical management tools. So thrips are some of the most damaging pests in nurseries and landscapes. For the most part, you will see the damage before you see the pests. So on the right, here are is what the damage looks like. They have piercing, rasping mouth parts. So they kind of scrape the underside of a leaf. And a lot of times you'll see the damage or the signs. The signs here are on the left, and the sign includes the insect. So this is a really tiny insect. It's going to be difficult to see without a hand lens. But these are the spots they leave behind. These are, this is frass. Field monitoring or greenhouse monitoring. This is uh, looking at daily or seasonal conditions. And in a greenhouse situation, unless you're using artificial light, certainly uh, lighting is going to change over the course of the year. Pests, what types of crops you're using, weather, what type of soil are you using, what is the plant health, and then the presence of pests and beneficial insects. So these yellow sticky cards are really great for monitoring. Blue sticky cards can be used for thrips. But uh, it's really important to see if you even have a pest before you start using pesticides. Economic threshold. This is where you're staying when you're in the nursery field because people don't accept anything less than perfect when they're purchasing your plants. So you're using uh, the population level at which serious damage or cost losses occur as your standard. So you don't want to get to this point. You want to deal with it before it gets to this point. 
Aesthetic threshold more for landscape plants. This is the damage level unacceptable to the viewer, even if the plant health may not be at risk. And as I said, aesthetics are everything when you're talking about nurseries. Unless you're working with a native plant nursery, it's important to stay up in that economic threshold as your guidance. So you also want to time your treatments. So scale insects have piercing, sucking mouth parts and they have this protective covering that keeps them from being separated from their body and so you can't really treat them when they are at this stage in that upper left picture if you're doing any sort of chemical control. What you want to do is treat them when they're in the crawler stage which is the first nymphal instar and there's functional legs so they're able to move about and so in order to know if you are if the timing is right to treat you would use this double-sided sticky tape on your plants and you can see what that looks like close up on the bottom left here and that would be the time that if you're going to use some sort of pesticide on your scale this is when you do it so you've got resistance versus tolerance resistance means that the plant has properties that prevent or impede disease development. Tolerance is when you have a host that develops, continues to grow, and produces well even though the pathogen may be there. So roses uh, routinely get black spot around here and if you're selling plants you do not want to sell plants that have black spot so it would be a good idea to stick to resistant cultivars of roses and uh, Helmut Schmidt is one of those roses that is resistant. However, if you have a high enough population of rose black spot in the area, say you have other plants there that are not resistant but they have it, the plants that are resistant will get it. It's really going to be uh, a matter of there being too many spores in the area to prevent the disease from happening. Tolerance, uh, anthracnose of status. This is a crown rot that causes chlorosis, wilting, and death. You can see a picture here of that. The blue and white cultivars may be tolerant to this disease, so it'll get the disease. The disease will be there, but it will continue to thrive in spite of it. So the tools you have in your tool case are biological control, cultural controls, mechanical controls, and chemical controls. So we have parasitoids, predators, nematodes, and pathogens. And this is a wasp that uh, is a parasite or parasitoid of aphids. And it's really important if you're going to bring these in, and that's the way it works in a greenhouse situation, you're going to have to bring in these things, that you don't use pesticides because you will be killing these guys along with the pests. Cultural controls. This is modifying greenhouse management practices, using the right irrigation, providing air movement, um, and keeping the weeds down to a minimum. Bittercress is a very common weed both in the landscape and in the nursery and each bittercress plant can generate up to 5,000 seeds. So not, a, not only is that a problem as far as having weeds in your plant material but it also is a place where insects can hang out and viruses can be on the, uh, the weeds without showing any symptoms. So it's really important that not only are your containers clean of weeds, but the floors need to be clean of weeds, and then the perimeter around your greenhouse need to be clean of weeds. In some cases, you can prune things out. This is bacterial canker that you can prune out, and you need to be at least six inches behind the damage. I would not uh, assume that that would take care of it though. It's, you're going to want to keep an eye on that. You may even want to just get rid of the plant. It may not be feasible to 
prune out bacteria if you're trying to sell trees. If you're going to use chemical controls, you want to avoid broad spectrum types. Timing is important. I mentioned that with scale insects. You want to make sure it's at the most vulnerable point of its life cycle. Mode of action. It's really important to rotate out your pesticides. If you want to use uh, pesticides, you want to use a variety of types of modes of action so you don't fill the resistance. And is the benefit of using this pesticide going to outweigh the cost of using that pesticide? And of course, environmental risks are always there. So be aware that pesticide resistance in pests and the resurgence of these pests. Another pest may came come along. You may have knocked down some thrips and aphids may come along. Also, there are pests that may not be killed and may produce more pests than are resistant to that pesticide. So this is where you have that pest resurgence and secondary pest outbreak because resistance does occur. And just so you know, this is a really commonly used uh, pesticide. It's a chemically, uh, this is a metacloprid or various types. Uh, this is one particular brand, and it's a systemic insecticide. So it gets in the plant, and it, if a pest feeds on that plant, it will kill it. It's chemically related to nicotine. It acts on certain kinds of receptors in the nerve synapse, and it's more toxic to invertebrates than it is to mammals. So that's one of the reasons it was introduced so heavily, but they're finding that it's really uh, toxic to bees.